What's up, homies? My name is Matt Lurker. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, today we've got a great video for you. Today I'm sharing the seven habits that will change your life. And the last two of them are very powerful. I know that we have the power to turn our lives into whatever we want them to be. So today I'm going to help you do that. So with that, let's get started. Think about the most successful people that you know. Think about someone who inspires you to work harder and get more done. Each of the people who you might be thinking about probably are very intentional in everything that they do. And I would guess that as part of this, they begin with the end in mind whenever they do something. And Stephen R. Covey talks about this in his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, which is a great read. I definitely recommend it. But to illustrate what this means to me, I'll share an experience that I had this past month. So recently, I was very honored to be a guest speaker for a class of seventh graders in their college and career exploration class. Now, I don't think that all of the kids that I talk to need to go to college, but for those that are going to go to school, I would like to help them avoid getting a degree that they can't actually do anything with or avoid wasting time and just taking classes that won't actually help them get to where they want to go. So here's what I did in my time with those kids. I laid out the process of how you can get to college and why you might even want to go. So on the right side of the board, I wrote up a short list of dream jobs and I asked the kids, like, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? What's your dream job? One of them said he wants to be a NASCAR driver. I hope that works out. A couple said they want to be engineers, one said that he wanted to be an animator, and another a real estate agent. After getting my short list, I then wrote high school on the left, college in the middle, and put arrows between each step, landing at their dream job. And I'm not a perfect teacher by any means. I'm sure I could have done better that day, and I could probably do better right now explaining it in this video. But I set it up that way intentionally because I wanted the kids to think about the end result and then think about the path that's going to take them there and really be intentional about each step. And doing this, I hope that I save them a little bit of time because I know that they think it's probably far away, but they're not too far away from when they've got to make a lot of big decisions for their life. Because I've seen way too many people get worthless degrees or get a degree that's not actually going to get them to where they want to go because they didn't think about where they want to go and then reverse engineer it and think about the process to get there. But this doesn't apply to just getting a good job. Nothing in life is going to happen just because we want it to. So for any goal that you have, you'll never get there unless you are intentional about the milestones in between where your goal is and where you are now. Habit number two is to be grateful and appreciative. Sometimes I've found myself or others getting frustrated because life hasn't turned out the way we want it to be. Maybe we don't have the nicest, newest things, or we don't have as many friends as we'd like, or whatever reason. Especially in the digital age where we get things right now and right when we want them, we start to develop expectations that we'll begin to get things or have experiences just because we want them. And this can take the form of many things. I want a new motorcycle. I've got relatives who want a new house. I've got friends who want bigger and better jobs. Or maybe you're someone who hasn't found the right partner to marry yet and you want that person right now. And none of those things are bad and it's totally fine to aspire to great things in our life but we need to be able to appreciate where our lives are at right now and to find happiness today. We also need to be able to help others do the same thing and to show gratitude for everything we have. I know you may not believe it if you're on social media, but everyone has problems. Everyone you know has something that they are challenged with right now, but it can make a huge difference in someone else's life just to give them a compliment or to acknowledge something that they did and show gratitude for that. The third habit is to set deadlines for yourself. Whether it's a personal goal to learn a new skill or a dream to visit the national park in the state next to you, make it happen. Never be the person who never does the things that they say they like to do. If your thing is camping, then make a deadline for yourself and say that you'll go camping at least once every month. If your thing is painting, decide that you'll do that for at least two hours by the end of the week. Or if you want to learn a new skill like programming, decide that you'll take at least one course by the end of the week that you can find on YouTube and trust me, those courses are out there and they'll give you the same skills that a college degree would. Whatever your thing is, make the time to make sure that it gets done or something else will get in the way. I promise you. I think that one of my biggest fears is getting to the end of my life and realizing that I never did any of the things that I wanted to because I was busy wasting time. By setting deadlines for yourself and attaching a timeline to your goals will help you to take that trip, learn that language, and to spend more time with family. Whatever it is, just set it to a date and make sure it happens. So that brings me to habit number four, which is to make a plan for every day. 
you need to understand that good habits are more powerful than being disciplined. Because even on the days where you wake up and you're just not feeling it, you're still gonna do what's a habit for you. You're not gonna do what you've been disciplined or trying to be disciplined about. And this first starts with planning it. If you're willing to sit down and schedule out a rough idea of what's gonna happen that week, and then every day schedule out the details of what'll happen tomorrow, you'll be able to schedule for yourself the habits that you wanna develop. And this is powerful because an idea not written down is just a dream. It's not a goal. Let's say you wanna have better health. Having the idea of wanting to go to the gym more is not nearly as effective as writing it down and scheduling and setting an alarm for yourself that you're gonna wake up at 5.30 the next day and make it happen. If you wanna eat healthier, planning what you're gonna eat for the next day is gonna make it a lot easier to actually achieve your goal rather than just taking the easy way out and making a Taco Bell run. As part of planning your day, you need to establish a good morning routine. This includes setting out the clothes that you're gonna wear the next day, setting out your gym clothes, and even planning what you're gonna have for breakfast the next morning. This will reduce the amount of decisions that you have to make on things that shouldn't be stealing any of your mental energy. And it'll free you up later in the day for things that are actually critical. Number five is to reduce time on social media, including YouTube. The internet and social media have made it possible for us to be more connected with people than ever before. This is good and bad though, and study after study has shown that social media is doing more harm than good to our minds. So there's two main reasons why you should spend less time on social media. The first is the actual time that you're wasting on those apps. A study found that the average American spends 144 minutes per day on some social media platform. This is a huge waste of time and scrolling through Facebook is not gonna help you actually build the life that you dream of. Spending nearly two and a half hours a day scrolling through Facebook or Instagram or Pinterest or whatever is not gonna help you build the life that you dream of. The second reason to spend less time on social media is because of the way it distorts our worldview. When we're on social media, we're bombarded by tropical landscapes and images of health and fitness that are not even attainable because they were fabricated inside of Photoshop. So we trick ourselves into thinking that everyone else's life is so much better than our own. And this severely affects our view of our own self-worth. It also creates unrealistic expectations of what we think and what we feel like our life should be. It's just not healthy. And we should all spend a little bit less time on social media. Number six of the habits that will change your life is to surround yourself with positive people and positive media. Again, sparingly on that one. You've probably heard that you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. And whether that's exactly true or not doesn't really matter because what is true is that you become what you surround yourself with. Being around people who constantly find something to complain about is gonna bring you to that same mindset of trying to find fault in everything. And this goes back to habit number two that I mentioned. We need to be able to have gratitude if we wanna be positive. And this is probably one of the most powerful habits on this list because even with all the money in the world and all the cars in the world, there's still gonna be cloudy days that you could complain about, or maybe the seat in your new Ferrari is too stiff, or maybe the person at the grocery store gave you a weird look. There will always be something to complain about, but if that's what you're looking for, then that's what you'll find, and you'll never even see all the good that's in the world. So I know that I just said habit number six is very powerful, and that is true, but number seven, in my opinion, is the most powerful one on this list because that is to have a growth mindset. You need to have a passion for becoming a better person, whatever that means to you. According to Stanford psychologist Carol Dweck, there's two types of mindsets that everyone in the world has, fixed and growth. Having a fixed mindset assumes that our personality is made up of fixed traits, like how intelligent we are, how sociable we are, how creative we are, and the list goes on. A growth mindset though, assumes that while we do have inherent traits from birth, None of these things are static and that I have the power to develop myself in any way that I want to. This means that even though I may not be strong, I can be determined and get stronger. And I may not see myself as charismatic, but I could be more likable and more friendly. And even though it may be difficult for me to learn a new language or be more creative, I can put in the time to learn the skills to develop those talents. And in her 20 years of research on the subject, Carol Dweck found that developing a growth mindset rather than a fixed one creates a passion for learning rather than a hunger for approval about the way that we are. This helps us to not be so discouraged by failure because we understand that it's an opportunity to learn and do even better next time, finding happiness in the growth rather than just the end result. This alone is probably why I'm so happy as a person. 
I don't consider myself to be a very wealthy person. I don't consider myself to be smarter than the average person. And I don't have any honors on my school transcripts or anything like that. What I do have though is a long list of ways that I've grown as a person and an even longer list of mistakes that I've made along the way with determination to learn from them. But as long as I'm always learning and always growing, then I'm happy. I truly believe that seeing that growth in yourself and in others is where so much long-term happiness comes from in life. So guys, I hope you found at least some of the video insightful. And if you made it this far, let's all do our part to like the video and maybe even share it with someone who we know that we believe in and want to see grow. Also, yes, my camera battery died, so I slapped a new one in and I'm just holding you in my hand right now. But anyway, new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now. As always, I love you guys and I'll catch you next time.